This is Jebro, and welcome to Paragon. This is Paragon, a third-person MOBA brought to you by Epic Games. It has everything that a MOBA would normally have. It has heroes, it has free lanes, it has a core which you need to destroy to win. Before you get to the core, you have to destroy the towers and the inhibitors to be victorious. So welcome to Agora everyone, and I'm going to be your guide, Jebro, through this video to tell you all the basic mechanics of Paragon, how you will be able to go through the map upgrade your skills, use the brand new equipment system known as cards, how to upgrade them, how to get XP to upgrade those skills. I'll be showing you some of the new abilities, some of the new stuff which really makes this game individual and such an exciting game with great PvP fights that I've been having and the ones that you will have in the future. Paragon has a lot of potential to be a great competitor with MOBA games of the here and the now and even of the future. So welcome to Paragon. So we are indeed in the game and we're ready to go, but wait a minute. Let's get into the map first and check out exactly what we need to know to start off with the basic guide of this video, which is the intention, of course. So you can see on the map, you have the core, your core, your base, which is the main aim for the enemy team to destroy. And of course, your aim is to destroy the enemy team's core. That is in the southmost side of the map and the north side of the map, which is the enemies, of course. You will always be on the blue team, indicated on the map, and the enemy will always be the orange. It's not red, it's orange, or amber, whatever you want to call it. After the core, we have the inhibitors. There is one for each lane. There's only one core, which is your main base. You have an inhibitor for each lane, as you can see on the screen. That's kind of where everyone's gathered around now. When you destroy the enemy's inhibitor, you are able to get super minions. Now these are stronger minions which get sent down the lane in any MOBA. That is your main way to actually progress down the lane and most of the time in the early game especially, you will be, high, be behind these mobs so that they take the brunt of the damage. You come in and you get that final hit or you just AOE them down and try and get them down as fast as possible. Then we have the towers. Now we've got the inner towers on the lanes as you can see. And then we've got the outer lane towers. Now these obviously need to be destroyed so you can get past those so you could advance on towards the inhibitor, then the core. Inhibitors actually do have a, they do get re reconstructed, they actually get reformed. So you have to destroy them again to get back through to the enemy core unless you're already through and you can then just end the game like that. Laning is obviously a very important aspect of any MOBA and of course when you are killing those minions getting the last hit gives you a larger amount of XP. Now XP is very very important in Paragon and any MOBA of course and in any game you play when XP is obviously involved because it can, means you can upgrade your skills and that's very important because you want to try and level up as a team but also you want to level up faster so you, you want to get the last hits on those mobs so you can upgrade your skills also you can get card xp there's two versions of xp which we will talk about later in the video i want to just continue on the map and then we'll go back into the game have a look at the ui and explain exactly what card xp is compared to regular xp for your abilities what is next you can see other stuff on the map you know there is a small red kind of icons on the map and blue icons and also a singular black one as well these are all buffs now these are important for your team to get let's not forget that these buffs are actually belonging to the player rather than the actual team so that player is going to have the buff the increased damage mana regeneration whatever it is and it's important that the right person gets the right buff 
The only exception really to the rule I just mentioned is the purple buff. The purple buff is the OP buff and this gets distributed to your whole team. It activates your prime helix cards on your team and buffs minions, damage and health. I will go through these in another video in more depth but basically you have like an elite card which gets activated and is very very powerful. That's why I say OP buff and in game footage at the moment you even have this little OP icon which goes above your head now this obviously only goes for a certain amount of time you pick up the buff by killing a elite monster on the map there's only one you can see it highlighted on the map at the moment and when you kill that the guy on your team who has picked up the orb has to put it in the area uh, on indicated on the map and you can see it on screen as well through the gameplay where you have to basically take it and you get that buff now you pick it up from the middle which is where you kill the boss and you drop it off of course on the enemy side if it was on your side it would be a lot easier to get so of course the team on the opposite side has to defend to make sure you don't get that either that they can let you get it and just sit back and defend but of course you'll be very powerful your minions will be very powerful and you get a nice push out of that sometimes it's very risky those chances come very you know not very often so you've got to pick your timing so well to go for that buff now let's talk about the buffs which get gathered by single players and those buffs apply to them only so the purple buff obviously has a monster guarding that you have to kill it to get to that buff and then of course the other buffs do have some mobs as well easier to kill they have a couple of mobs which you just kill in the camp typical jungle you get the buff and that's your lot Standard rotation at the beginning of the game at the moment in Paragon is that team members will go to a red buff and a blue buff. They will separate or they'll leave characters or heroes to actually destroy those buffs early game to give them a little bit of a damage bonus or an actual, you know, mana regen and whatnot as well to really push them into the map. Of early game as well, they do have a spawn timer, so you can't just run there straight away and kill them. You have to wait for the time to tick down before they spawn. Obviously, when you get those killed, the buff, the actual mobs don't just come back up straight away. You have to wait again to kill them again. So obviously, there's going to be people running through the jungle, getting these buffs, getting these kills on the NPC uh, camps as well to give them XP. And obviously, jumping back into lanes to gank and whatnot as well. There's one more kind of camp as well, and they're regular NPC mobs, which you kill to get XP and card XP. So you don't get any buffs from these, you simply kill them, and obviously that's going to be a jungler's job, or if you're just in a lane and you need some XP, you can pop off and grab yourself a quick kill if someone's, you know, being killed, and you can actually level yourself up a little bit more. Shadow Plains are the next thing we're going to talk about before we go on to card XP. They are areas which stealth the players that are sitting inside them. You can be on either team, you can stand inside the area and you will be stealthed, which means you can recall back to your base, which we'll talk about in a moment as well. And you can actually, you know, scout out areas, you can gank people, you can go in there just to hide if you've been running from a fight, or you can group up in them as well and gank people on the lanes like I just said. Very effective areas, they have saved my life many times, and they've also been useful tools to take out opponents of course. I've been talking about card XP throughout the entire video so we are going to go through that finally you say and I say as well because card XP is very important. The way you can get card XP is by killing mobs in the lanes, so the guys that are charging towards you, by killing players, by doing camp kills, by picking up orbs, by doing loads of different stuff of course as well as towers and other players. There is a lot of ways you can get card XP. Now you can actually collect card XP from the floor. There's a small little orange amber kind of balls which you can pick up you just walk over them and it gives you card xp when you hit last hit a mob which is another reason why you should be trying to last hit as much as possible you can gain extra card xp you can also gain card xp from harvesters now harvesters are all over the map and you can see them on the screen now on the locations you can see they're quite obvious as well there's only um, about six or seven of them but they are very useful to have they can be used 
and uh, built to actually harvest card XP and every so often you have to walk up to them stand on the plate and then actually get that XP you stand on the plate until you receive all of it then it's empty and it harvests again they can be destroyed and they can be built harvesters can be built with a specific key cards harvester key cards and depending on which card you have depends on the amount of time it takes to construct the actual building itself. Once you have stood on the plate and you have built it and channeled it, then you can move off and the rest of the construction will continue. We are going to briefly talk about cards because we talked about card XP and the first card which is very very important for harvesting of course. Not everyone will have that card but you can see on the screen at the moment this is where you can actually build your deck. Now the deck comprises of three different types of cards. The prime helix card, the equipment cards and also the upgrade cards. You are not able to use all of the cards, of course, because each character has their own affinity. Now, that means that they can use different types of cards. Now, there's colors which are next to, on the screen, you can see that at the moment where it says uh, Rampage DPS, which is the name of the deck. You can actually see two colors, the green and the red, which means that he can use the Fury, which is red, and the Growth, which is green, those types of cards. It's different for each character, for each hero, for example, on the screen at the moment, you can see people can use Intellect, which is blue. People can use the Order, which is white. The Fury, which is red. And the Growth, which is green. There's different combinations. Twin Blast is just red only. He's just damaged. So that's a good indication of what you can do. So those actual cards, those actual colors as well, are good indications of what those guys can do and what they're actually about. Once you understand the car system, it's a very awesome system. How you gain the XP and whatnot to get that as well and get the cards. Once you go from the deck building to in-game and then assign those cards when you get the different XP and potentially use different cards in the deck for different occasions and how the fight's evolving is very nice. It's a very good system. So it's just working out. Once you've got it, you know it and you're done. So don't worry too much about that. Next, we're going to go into the UI and the controls, and then we're pretty much almost done. So you've been watching it the whole time while I've been doing the video, and this is the UI mainly first, and then we're going to talk about the controls as well. Top right hand side of the screen, you can see the map. Mini portraits as well, you can see the rest of your teammates currently on the map, where they're moving to, where they're going, where who they're currently facing. You can see a small little icon as well, which is just orange, uh, with another portrait as well. That is the enemy, so you can see the enemy on the map as long as your allies have seen them and can see them at the current time. The rest of the map was explained earlier in the video, so you need to go back there and have a look if you're unsure of anything else. Otherwise, you can see the time that has actually been passing by is at the top middle of the screen. So then you can see at the bottom of the screen, we have our health bar and we have our mana ability bar. Now, obviously, your mana and health goes down. If you get hit, you get your health bar gets taken down. If you use abilities, your mana goes down. It's fairly simple. To the right hand side of the bar is the XP bar. Now that XP bar is just, you know, it's a circle and it just goes round as you progress and you get more XP. When you hit the whole level, which is I'm, I'm about to right now, I'm going to get another point to spend on my abilities to the right hand side of that. Now on the left side of the HP and mana bars, you can see my card XP bar. Now that is obviously amber, which is the same color as the amber you pick up and the CXP you also get which is streamed into you or you pick up off the floor and currently that's at 9. Normally your card XP level is obviously going to be higher than your um, XP level because XP level only goes up to 15 whereas the actual card XP level goes right up to 60 you know? so it's quite a lot more. That obviously ticks over you're able to get more card points. So you can see on the left hand side of that little box there, um, or circle, whatever you want to call it, is unspent points. This is obviously from your card XP gain, and you need to make sure when you port back to the base, or you recall to the base, that you do spend those. If you can't, obviously building them up and saving them for the next upgrade or equipment piece that you need. Then, seeing as we're on that side of the actual user interface as well, you can see one, two, three, four, and also you can see the other two boxes which are below. Now, those are your card slots. So, the bottom two below the unspent points 
is are the actual passive card spots. So you want to put things in there which can't really be used. Um, things that, that cards that don't have abilities, uh, actual active things, because the one, two, three slots uh, and four are all slots which can use active abilities. You will of course eventually be putting cards in there which just get upgraded and don't have abilities. There are equipment cards as well that do have abilities that you can actually use with them. So just make sure that when you're putting things in these slots, you're not putting active cards into passive slots. Just quickly then as well in the middle you can see placing harvester and obviously that is another little cast bar which you can see and when it's actually reached you've placed the actual harvester as well so that's pretty much most of the UI in the bottom right hand corner you can see the controls and these are your abilities which you can use obviously in game to defeat your enemies to actually win the game and actually to do stuff so let's go over the controls of the game and let's do that right now Time for the controls guys, WASD is your movement as per usual, if you're in play in the FPS or if you play like Smite or something like that, in terms of like third person mobile or third person games, that's your movement keys, these are PC controls, I don't know what the controls are for PlayStation 4, um, but I'm sure we can find out and I can link those below. Spacebar is your jump. Then you have your actual abilities. So left mouse button click is your basic attack. That's the one you can just spam over and over and over again, and that's gonna be your best friend. Right hand mouse button is your alternate attack. Then Q is your primary, E is your secondary, and R is your ultimate. That's the big button in the middle, which uh, is you know your big massive cooldown, which is gonna do either a lot of damage, a big stun, depending on which hero you are. Now we kind of briefly went over the card slots and uh, the keys that go with them. So one, two, three, four, and then G opens up the shop when you've recalled back to the base. And that's just simple, you know, one, two, three, four, your actives, you can use those and that's how you use those abilities. Then we have general control abilities as well, which is B, which is your recall to base, which I kind of just showed you as well through the cards. Then you've got C, which is team communication. So in MOBAs and other games where you can communicate, you press C and then you start to press or click on the other way you want to communicate. So missing left lane or attack mid lane or attack right lane or be right back or um, retreat, stuff like that. And then we've got scoreboard tab, which is, you know, an obvious one. And then you have enter, which means you can enter and start the chat. Okay, then we have control and the ability key to level up an ability, which I showed you before as well. Um, that is your obviously active abilities on the bottom right hand side of the screen. And then you have left control or escape to cancel the ability you are currently using. And then you have shift, which is travel mode. Now this is very important because it's going to be your main mode to get around, to get around between lanes, to get to fights quicker, to go up lanes quicker from respawn, for example, just to get to places faster. It's obvious. Just be careful that when you're using your fast travel, that you don't get hit while you're in it because if you do you will get stunned and you will get rooted so that's one thing about that so use it at the right time otherwise you could screw yourself over and then alt z is your taunt so there we go that's all the controls pretty much for the game of uh paragon and that will be the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it wasn't too long. Uh, the plan was to actually go for a short period of time, but there's so much involved in Paragon. But once you got the basics, then you're good to go and you're good to have fun. Start smashing out on those lanes. Start beating those opponents and just have fun with it. You know, if you lose, you lose. If you win, you win. But always try to learn stuff about your character, yourself, your heroes, your team. I'll see you in another video for Paragon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you soon.